Okay, hello everybody. Today we're going to be working again at the stick control as usual. This time, how you doing Sandy? Uh, this time, uh, page 10, 11, and uh, page 8 and 9, and maybe even 12 or 13 or whatever. We're going to work with singles, single strokes, either in 16th note formation or 32nd note formation and triplets either eighth note formation or 16th note 16th note triplet formation so let's start really simple and uh, you should have the stick control book with you right now hopefully um, let's hit page 10 now I do page 10 a variety of different ways use utilizing the sticking heights And I've been warming up for a couple minutes now, so my hands are sort of loose, but not, a, not as much as they should be. What I want to do is explain how I'm going to approach this. Hey, Chad, how you doing? What we're going to do, we're going to do line one, page ten. And I'm going to do that in a full stroke position, which is here. Now, once I make contact or apply that position, it's no longer called a full stroke, it's called a free stroke. So this is my position, which is the full stroke position. Once I use it, it becomes a free stroke. Now, throughout the explanation, if there is any questions, what I would like you to do is put them into the chat and we'll hopefully could address what was, uh, you need to be addressed. So, I'm gonna do the first line page 10 in full strokes in the full stroke position free strokes so we have a combination here it's written in cut time but we're going to play it in 4-4 four, four time which simply means we're going to count it as 1 and 2 and 3 E and the 4 E and the so here we go and I'm not going to use the metronome yet so I'm going to do it slow combat cold fingers gripping the sticks are tough for a long time I don't have cold fingers I'm in a nice place here in my studio the heat's on and I've been warming up but when I say warm up I don't mean wear gloves and my hands are cold I'm more I'm warming up as far as my wrist and my drumstick is concerned that's the difference what I mean now I just need to make this presentation sometimes my left hand uh, is affected by the weather and it has nothing to do with my drumming it, it, my drumming has never caused that when I was a, a child 10 11 years old I fell down the stairs concrete stairs with milk bottles real solid glass bottles and I fell with the bottles and I cut my artery under here and I have it over here as well 64 stitches so it does affect me somewhat the weather but it makes my maybe pinky uncontrollable and a little tingly. But that's because of the weather. And if it's hot, that goes away. But when I say warm up, loosen up, I mean like so. I'm warming up with a, a few elements here. My wrist is becoming loose. I'm inside of a tempo. And I'm developing a sound. That's what I mean by that. Does that help you out, Mr. Chad? Okay, so back to line one in the, the, the full stroke position. When I make each stroke, I try to have, <laughs> hey Dave, how you doing? It's tomorrow, not today. And we have to talk later on, David, perhaps on Skype, okay? No, this, this is not a sport. Okay, let me, let me explain something to you. Maybe, I, you know, you misunderstand warming up. You know, the stretching... If you were, this is first of all, like I said, it's not a sport. You stretch, that's like if you were doing 
uh, Taekwondo or Ishan Ru or, or whatever karate sport you are, or you're going to play, uh, you're, you're doing track or you're playing football or you want to loosen your body up that way. That's stretching. This is not a sport. There was times, and I, I don't even do it no more because it pulls muscles. When I was in the drum corps, we used to hold the sticks like this and twist the wrist like this. I can't even do that. That's the stretch. And that hurts, man. That's not making me loose. That's making it painful. <laughs> so this is the warm-up I'm doing. I'll sit here and go like this for three minutes. That's my warm-up. Like I said, it's not a sport. But anyway, I don't want to go away from the lesson. Let's talk about the lesson itself. When you see me do that first line, I did it in the full stroke position. And if you notice, before I make each stroke, I try to have that stick come back before I attack it again. That's the, uh, that's the beauty of that. That's one, and two, and three, E, and a four, E, and a one, and two, and three, E, and a four, E, and a. Now my sticks come back to the same spot. Okay? Chad, Chad, Chad. Who left? There's uh, Sandy, Chad, and Dave. Okay, I gotta sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so now, the object of the first guy, the first line, is to attack from the right side. Notice when I'm, the downbeats always fall on my right hand. One, and, two, and, three, E, and, a, four, E, and, a, one, and, two, and, three, E, and, a, four, E, and, a. Now, I go to the line two to strengthen my left hand attack. And now, I'm going to beginning, I'm going to start with my left, my left hand. And if you're right handed, you're going to see that, you know, your left side's a lot weaker. So, you, you know, you want you, the object of the stick control, one of the main objects, is to develop strength on the right side of you and the left side of you, equalizing that attack. So, at first, when I was learning this, I, I always had, I always skipped line two. I said, ah, what can I do? So, now, the, in the past years, I spent a little bit more time on the left hand lead so I could kind of equalize it. And it's still not equal because when I'm playing, it's always with the right hand lead. All right, but if I'm playing open-handed, you know, it's the left-hand lead. And it's, you know, with today's drum sets, it makes a lot more sense to develop both sides, open-handed. Now, I, I'm a traditional player, so I have never felt that I should always, you know, work with that. But anyway, let's go to line two. And notice, I'm doing it slow, and each stroke comes up. Three, E, and a, four, E, and a, one, and two, and three, E. takes care of line two. Any questions on line one, line two, in the full stroke position? Because I'm going to do three, four, and five. Five is the beautiful one. Because five distributes the weight, I mean the weight, the, uh, the, the workload to the right side and then to the left side. So let's hit line three. That's starting with doubles now. Two and Three E and a four E and a one and two and three E and a four E and a one and two equal sound relax four E and a boom line three starting now the doubles with the left hand one and two and three E and a four E and a one and two and Three E and a four E and a one and two and three E and I did single ah, sorry one and two single strokes three E and a four E and a now I'm developing the right side and the left side as well now I'm gonna skip line four I'm gonna go to line five because I want to cover some things today line five the first measure is a right hand lead. The second measure, it's a left-hand lead. 
Now, that is distributing the workload from the right side to the left side equally so you could put a balance in your attack. One, and two, left hand lead, three, E, a four, E, and a one, and right hand lead, three, E, and a four, E, and a one. We see that, gentlemen? Now, this is all in the full stroke. It's high. I'm relaxed. I'm do doing it slow. I'm not trying to set any kind of records. I'm developing that sound with the stick, like I'm not getting this. See, I want to develop both sides equal. And that's in the full stroke position. Now, the faster I get, if you notice, I said before I make each stroke, I come back. Now, the faster you get in tempo, you're not going to have time to wait for that stick to come back. So, watch what I do. I'm going to put the. I'm going to go to 120. And this time I'm going to do that in half strokes. My half stroke position is this, as opposed to the full stroke. So you have half stroke. So now watch. Start with line one. That's the the pulse. That's one and two and three, four. One, two. an illusion there and this is what people get confused about there was a method is still out there and I, I refer to it as the Adler system and the Adler system was a C saw like so it has some benefits but it's not what's happening when I do this it does look like it but it's not happening if I play just my vamp one and two, and then fill in it as sixteenth notes. That right hand is moving. It's not seesawing. Yeah. How can I seesaw? You see that, gentlemen? So what I have now at the half stroke position at one twenty, line one, one, two. Three, two, one, two. Left hand lead. Line three, one, two. Up, 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 up. Right hand lead. Line four, one, two. gentlemen I would hang out mostly with line five for a while you get not line five going like I said you're equalizing the attack on the right side and the left side and then do the whole page it's the same sequence as page five the left hand side and some combinations of the, the, the right hand side okay so now any questions about that that's in the full stroke position a half stroke position rather I'm sorry Oh, this computer's driving me crazy. Oh, by the way, before I forget, Dave, there is no lesson this evening. I'll talk to you about that later. What we've been doing, gentlemen, is taking the 8 o'clock lesson and having everybody go to my site, and it's doing a drum set application. I will do a couple drum set applications on this site, okay? So, we, we covered now the full stroke, the one and two and three E and the four, the full stroke position, then the half stroke, and notice the sound is a little lighter. The next stroke 
stroking position I like to use would be the quarter stroke. Let's hit like try line. Hey, wait, we can get up. Huh. 160. I'm coming down from here. Look at the control. Stick control. Line five. So that's the full stroke, the half stroke, and the quarter stroke. And that's all in four. I'm going to go back to the half stroke position, and I'm going to up the tempo a little bit. Now, when I first went through this book, the, the metronomes that they have, you know, I don't want to be prehistoric or anything, but it was the Franz metronome. It, it was uh, not, it was, I guess, not digital. It was dialed. It had a light on the top of it. And only went up to 204, or 208, rather. And uh, I figured, I get this thing going on at 208, man. I got it going on. All right, my hands are there. That's not how it works. I'm at 180, and I'm still going to play this in 4-4. Four, four. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. That was the end. I do the whole page at 180. All right, or I mean 208 rather when I was doing this at 180 right now. The reason why I'm at 180 is to show you to travel up the metronome a different way. Let's take half of 180, which would be 90. So I'm going to take this guy down to 90. And you know, gentlemen, you know, you have to like, uh, be consistent with this kind of practicing to develop your hands. You know, it doesn't have any particular thing to do with any kind of uh, style of music, like, you know, you're playing reggae or hip hop or big band or swing or rock or jazz or whatever it might be that you're playing. This is a hand conditioner. And you'll be surprised by doing these, whatever music that you do favor and that you like to play, it's going to feel a lot better because now you have the facility, you have the tools to apply e nice and easy what you want to apply. Now, as I teach all of this privately and like I'm doing now plus my other site and everybody just is amazed at, you know, you don't teach any tunes. Well, I, I don't want to teach any tunes because I don't think, you know, anybody should uh, teach you a tune. I'll talk about a tune. But, uh, example, there's what, six, seven guys in here. And if everybody was, say, at the same level of playing, and we were working on a tune, let's take a tune like from Santana. We all know who Santana is. Like Oye Como Va, for example. Now, that, that's like a, uh, you have timbale players, conga players, bongo players, plus, you know, the, the uh, drum set player. And there's a lot going on in there. And uh, if you understand the rules of playing or organization of sections of A, A, B, A, whether it be straight ahead jazz or just rock or, uh, I don't know, whatever, waltzes, usually most American music is phrased in a four bar, 12 bar, or 16 bar increments or the whole case, 32 bars. And, for example, if I sat and demonstrated in, in class here how to play Oye Como Va, that's not going to do you any good. You'll get a better understanding of what's occurring. But when you go behind the drum set and the tune starts, it's you and the tune. That's it. Nobody's going to tell you or show you what to play or groove, so to speak, Accept the music. The music is going to teach you. You have to feel the music. You have to hum the music. You understand how to hold the stick. You understand how to play eighth notes. You understand what the hi-hat bow, bar, boom, pop. You understand what that is. Now, I'll have five drummers get up there and play the same song. They'll all play the same song and they'll play it well. 
but it's just slightly different from all five. So why would I want to teach you this is the way it goes kind of thing? That's ridiculous. Who's this, Chad? Well, there's no lesson tonight, Chad. Okay. So now we're going to go from back where I was. We did 180 like in half strokes. Now I'm going to do it in cut time now. Now my thought goes to instead of me playing one and two and, I'm thinking of one E and the. And then I come to the 16th notes, instead of go three E and the, four E and the, I'm going three E and the, I'm going one E and the, one E and the, two. One E and the, two E and the. So I'm going two E, I'm going two E and the, two E and the, one E and the, two E and. You see the difference there, gentlemen? Watch, one. Okay. Do you understand that, gentlemen? Please tell me. Talk to me, please. No response. Boo. Okay, everybody send me their address. I'll send you a million dollar check. <laughs> uh, everybody understands it. Just joking. Having a good time today. All right. Now, the one thing you need to re remember, it's not a contest. We're, we're not talking about the world's fastest drummer kind of thing, which is a good thing, I guess. Fun thing to do, but it doesn't make any sense, in my opinion. It's about you and what you're playing and how you feel and how you make it sound and how you, you approach it becoming very, very relaxed. You know, I don't care if I can play this at 208, 30 second notes, which I can't, but I'm not working towards that. That would make no sense to me whatsoever. All right, what I'm trying to do is just develop a sense of time, a sense of control of my stick, stick control. Now, that takes care of the single stroke part of it. And I want to go to another page right now. Right, I want to go to page 11. Uh, no, rather, 13, I'm sorry. Page 13. Okay. Everybody there, just tell me they're there. Page 13, stick control. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to the full stroke position. And notice that the first line is a four measure increment this time. You're doing the exercises as you did before line one, but the last measure you're doing one uh, measure of single strokes going back to the beginning of the line. So, with that being said, let me play it really slow and let me play. Uh, who's that? Okay, let me play, play it real slow. I'm going to count it. I'm just going to play the line and keep repeating the line nice and slow. One and two and three E and a uh, four E. this on one I guess 130 maybe one yeah one yeah one 130 same thing applies now I'm gonna play the line and that last measure is gonna be one measure of single strokes one two one two beginning Get it? Okay, put it up 
a little bit. Let's try, I don't know, 170. One, two, three, four, pop. So on and so forth. Now, that's the full stroke posi position, half stroke position, and the quarter, the quarter stroke position. Do we all understand that? And I have one more thing I want to add to this. Now notice I'm not doing the whole page. I will do tomorrow uh, the right uh, on page, what was that, page 10 and 11, and nine, 8 and 9, the right hand side. We'll get, we'll get to do that. Now, there's one more move here, and uh, you, you, if you've been hanging with me or coming to the, to the lessons, you hear me say vamp, and everybody, when I say vamp, everybody refers to this. Two, two, three, three, four. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four. Right hand. One, two, three, four, two. Three, two, three. So that's what I mean by vamping when I'm doing other things. Now, this vamp now is going to change. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the line as written. Instead of me now going back to the beginning of, of the exercise, I'm going to tag on a vamp. And the vamp being just 16th of For four measures. I'll do it slow. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Last measure. One, two, three. Vamp. One E and the two E and the three E and the four E and the two, two, three, four. Three, two, three, four, four, two. Back to the beginning. We see that? Play a little fit. Play it up tempo a little bit. Let's go back to 130. Uh, my left hand is hurting me today because of the weather. And like I said in the beginning of the lesson, I've cut artery, my, my actual main tenant, and the weather does affect my pinky. And it feels very uncomfortable today for some reason or other. All right, let me play this for a while as say half strokes at 130 with the vamp. One, two. Two, three, two, three, four, back. One, two, three, two, three, four, two, three. Now notice what I did is I put an accent on the vamp so that you know what measure I was with. But don't put an accent. Do it without the accent. Now, that's first the first move, do the line as written. Okay? The second move was to do that with a vamp. Now, the third move is you're going to do it with the vamp like you just did over and over again. And then you're going to extend the vamp. Oh, come on, computer. You're going to extend the vamp now maybe for three, maybe four minutes. I wouldn't go that far if you never d have done this before, so you don't want to injure yourself muscle-wise. You want it totally relaxed. So I set my timer and um, at three minutes, and I'll do it for a while, and then I'll extend the vamp for a minute. There we go. Now my left hand, like I said, is hurting me today. One, two. One, two, three, four, one. Bam. One, two, three, four. Back to the beginning. Vamp. Now I'm going to extend the vamp. So there's no four measure. It's just doing this for a minute, maybe two. Maybe three, whatever you can feel good with. Any tension, go back. This is 
is at 130, 16th notes. One, two, three. One, two, three. Up, 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 one. I have a little fun inside of it. Whatever I can do, two minutes, three minutes. And now you're gonna you're gonna find that the right hand side of you, if you're right-handed drummer, is going to be much stronger than the left. So like I recommend, do it slow, but spend more time on the left side so the left hand can catch up to the right side. Does that make any sense, gentlemen? Yes, no, maybe, by chance, okay. We all understand, yes? <laughs> okay. Mr. Fratikowski, you must be a great drummer. You understand everything I do. Next time you come up north, we'll invite you here, and you and I can do a lesson together on either YouTube or the site. How's that sound, Dave? David Fratikowski and I are friends for a very long time. Maybe uh, 15, maybe 20 years ago in that area. He used to come to my drum studio for a lesson uh, once a week. And uh, that was when my studio was located in another town. And then he decided to uh, move to Florida and I didn't stay, see him for a while. And he's back. So Dave and I are, you know, we fool around a lot and throw remarks back and forth. But it's only with love. That's all it is. It's a good time. No fighting, no uh, condescending kind of comments or whatever. We just have a lot of fun. Now, it's almost time for me to wrap it up, and I wish I could spend more time. But I have other things I have to do right now. And like I said, gentlemen, there is no lesson this evening. All right? Other something come up, I'm unable to, to uh, broadcast a new, uh, another lesson this evening on the other site. You just signed in. Jeremy, okay, that's all right. That's all right, Jeremy. Relax. The lesson is at 1 o'clock. Now, Jeremy, I mean, I'm not telling you to, to wear a collar and say at 1 o'clock, go visit Matt's site. You just need to remember, on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I do this at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right? Now, um... Uh, at, in the evening, on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I have another site which I do a drum set application. A Monday night is at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. There's no lesson tonight, but usually it's at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay, and it's uh, Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, if you're going to frequent the, the uh, site here and the other site, the other site's open until January 1st. It's free to everyone. As of January 1st, you're going to have to be a paid subscriber in order to view the lessons. Okay? I'm going to try to keep this open as much as I possibly can. This is a free one. But this is all only a one surface application. Now, Jeremy, do you have the books Stick Control, Syncopation, um, Joe Morello's Master Studies 1, Master Studies 2, and Gary Shafee's Time Functions. You have those books and my reading books? All right. Now, uh, you know, with the holidays coming up and... What is that? Well, it's not Master Series, it's Master Studies. You know, you can buy Master Studies 1, which I do a lot of work from. And what is this? Ugh. Okay, well, if you can buy it, the first one at least, Master Studies 1, I do a tremendous amount of work in there. Sit, stick control book, no problem. And I will also v, uh, send files to you. If you email me, do you have, are you on my mailing list, Jeremy?
Okay, what you want to do, email me. Let me give, give you my email name, and I'll put you on the list. That's my email. Just email me, and uh, I'll put you on the list. Now, you don't have to sign up for the site, my, my other site, in the evening. Not until uh, January 1st. There's going to be a change made on pricing. I was pricing it at $14.95 a month, and for six months it was $60. That's all going to go away. It's only going to be on a month-to-month -month basis for $19.95. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about, Dave. So I'm keeping the site open for free until January 1. If you want to become a member, uh, don't sign up now because it's not ready. The last week of December, you can sign up and you can view the lessons starting January. Okay, so Jeremy, send me, uh, your, send me an email and I'll put you on the list. And maybe I'll send you some files. You said you're from, what, Nashville? Was Nashville Central? That's three hours difference. No, it's one hour difference. Okay, good. Very good, Jeremy. I, I'm going to have to close it up, man, because in about two minutes. Oh, absolutely, I do, Will Cox. I actually do Charlie Will Cox, and I work out of both his, well, he has a couple different books mainly from this 150 rudimental solos to uh, his rudimental swing. And uh, if you're into the rudimental drum solos, the 150, uh, that was one of uh, Philly Joe Jones' uh, favorite books. I have a book called Philly Joe Jones' Transcriptions. God bless the guy who did that, man, because he transcribed all of of, jo of Philly Joe Jones' drum solos. And if you, you, uh, if you have the book, which you probably don't, I've researched the book, and there's so much in that book that's influenced by uh, Charlie Wilcoxon, the 150 rudimental drum solos. But that's, if you have the book, I do work out of that one as well. But you have to remember, I mean, see, I don't label my, my lessons as you know, beginner, intermediate, or advanced. Okay? Uh, let's say hypothetically, let's talk about you, Jeremy. Let's just say, I'm, I'm, don't take this to heart as personal, but I'm going to use you as, a, as a, re, re, uh, a reference point. Let's say, Jeremy, you've been playing 20 years, and you're gigging every night of the week, man, and you're making a lot of money, and you're playing some cover tunes, or you're playing some original material, <clears throat> or whatever it is that you're playing. And you studied with a couple different instructors. Now, if I'm giving a lesson on the level system and you don't know it or you've never heard of it, okay, you're going to say, wow, that's something new. So does that make you an advanced player or a beginner with that particular lesson? Or if you already know it, it's not harmful to revisit. Does that make any sense to you, Mr. Jeremy? All right, I need to close up. Sorry, but I'll be back tomorrow. Remember, 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I guess that's 12 p.m. Uh, Central Time. I guess that's one hour. And if you're in California, that's three-hour difference. That would be 11 o'clock. No, 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. And if you live in Australia, well, that's a day ahead. And I don't know what the time difference is. No problem, Jeremy, and whoever else is here, there's David and uh, Isaiah and Chad. Chad left his Sandy. All right, so we're getting quite a bit of a crew. Okay, gentlemen, have a good rest of the day. All right, so now, uh, Dave, if you're still on, 
I'll, I'll try to Skype you sometime this evening. No problem, Mr. Sandy. That, my pleasure. You're, are you on my email list, Sandy? If not, I, I left my email in this chat here. Email me, and I will put you uh, on the uh, mailing list. Okay? No problem. Uh, I'm on your email. All right. If, if I'm not, email me. All right. I need to get the sign out. It's time to go. Let's see.